really are just like a family. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel 12, 16. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse number 16. I want to thank those that prayed with me today. Earlier this morning, I had a little itchy throat. Didn't think it was a big deal. As soon as church was over, the pain got worse and my throat really, really hurt. I posted on the women's Facebook page and I just want to thank you guys that prayed for me. My husband went and got me these little drops and they are helping. Um, 1 Samuel 12, 16. You there? If you're not there, Brother Seth will put it on the TV for us. And it says, Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Amen. Now therefore stand and see yeah. this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Look over at your neighbor and say, Stand and see. Stand and see. At this time, I'm going to ask if my husband will pray over the word tonight. Father, we just love you and we thank you once again for this beautiful evening that you have given us to gather and to hear your word. Lord, as we sit at your feet tonight, Jesus, we ask you that you just speak to our hearts. Help us to hear what you are saying. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Lord, help us to hear what you're saying. Help us to apply it to our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Stand and see is what the title is tonight. Um, last Sunday night after church, we went out to eat, and on the way home, my husband said, Hey, next Sunday is Mother's Day. I want you to speak at the church. And I said, There's no way. I can't get a message together and study and all that in less than a week or a week's time. I just can't do it. And he said, Oh, come on. You can do it. I laughed, and I said, No, I can't do it. I'm sorry. But Monday morning, the Lord gave me this word, and I knew that it was God giving me this message. Stand and see. So I want to deliver this word tonight. Last Sunday morning, my husband preached on trusting in the Lord, trusting him with your past, trusting him with your present, touch, pr trusting him with your future. And he spoke and he used the three Hebrew boys in his message. And on Monday, I could not stop thinking about that. We know the story. King Nebuchadnezzar, he made an image of gold. He gathered the people to a dedication to bow down and to worship this golden image. And when the music was to start, they were to bow down and to worship. But these three Hebrew boys would not worship. In Daniel 3, 16 through 18, Brother Seth wants to put that on there for me. Daniel 3, 16 through 18 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Amen. These three Hebrew boys... We're saying we are going to stand and see. Right. We know that our God is able to get us out of this. Yeah. We know that our God is able to deliver us from right. this. But we are going to stand and see. And we know right. the story. The king got angry, right? He got mad. And he turned that, that fiery uh, furnace up seven times hotter than it originally was. It was so hot when the guards went to throw the three boys in. What happened? They burned up, right? Yeah. It was that hot. Yeah. But God, yeah. but God, yeah. stand and see. Amen. Jesus was in that fire with them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Church, yeah. whatever you are going through tonight, whatever situation you are in, stand and see. They were yeah. not alone. Right. The three Hebrew boys were not alone. They had to stand and see. Yeah. Amen. At Sister Mary's a few weeks back, um, us ladies, we got together for a women's Bible study. How many of you ladies enjoy that? Yeah. Yes, we had a great time. And Sister Mary was asking us ladies, how many have a life scripture? How many of us have a scripture that just got you through a really difficult time in your life? And some of us ladies shared that verse or their verses with each other. But this verse, 1 Samuel 
12, 16 is a verse that just really got me through a hard time. It was a time in my life where I was going through infertility. We were going through infertility. And I know that my husband has shared our testimony with you guys a million times. But how many of you ladies know that sometimes it's a little bit different when it comes out of our mouths than our husband's? <laughs> and he has shared with you guys. But I'm going to share a little bit of that testimony if that's okay. There was a time where we were going through a season of infertility. And that really, really, really hurt me. It really hurt. It, it bothered my husband. I think it hurt him to see me hurt more than anything. But it was just a very trying time for me. Many, many tears. Many, many doctor appointments. Many uh, tests and all these things that we went through in this season. And this was a verse that just really got me through that. Stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. And... We were uh, married about a year when we said, you know what, remarried, I should say. <laughs> we were remarried about a year when we said, you know what, we want to start a family. We have a house. He had a good job making money. We had vehicles. And we said, you know, we want, we want a family. But it just wasn't happening. And I went to the doctor, and they were running tests on me. They were doing all these different tests and blood work. And it may not sound like a big deal, but how many of you know when you go to the doctor and they order blood work, you got to go back to the doctor to get the results. Then you go back in, I didn't find anything. Let's go do an ultrasound. And then it was just a constant thing that we were going through. And I had to have the real expensive pregnancy test. Those little Dollar Tree ones wouldn't work. I had to have the one that says pregnant or not pregnant. They're like 25 bucks each. And then every month I'm buying these tests and, God, why? Shouldn't it be easy? I mean, it's supposed to be simple, right? But it just wasn't happening. And I'd go to the store and I'd see the diaper bags and the strollers. And I'm like, God, why can't I have that? What's wrong with me? What's wrong? Why? This isn't fair. I'd go to sleep at night crying, spending money on tests. And this didn't just happen for a few weeks. This is months. After month, after month, God, when is it going to be my time to have a baby? And God gave me this verse, stand and see, stand and see. So before we ever had a baby, before we ever had a phone call from an uh, adoption worker or anything, we started on the nursery. We were going to stand and see this great thing which the Lord was going to do. And Brother Seth, if you want to put on slide number one for me. This is my husband. We had no baby. We didn't know if we were having a girl. We didn't know if we were having a boy. But we were saying, we are going to stand and see. We are going to stand and see. And um, we painted the room. We had a neutral color. We were so excited this day, painting this room. We had no baby. But we were excited. God's going to give us a baby. And Brother Seth, if you want to put on slide number two, uh, we had Jeremiah 29, verse 11, put over the crib. And so this was a season right here where we were just standing and seeing. We were going to stand and see what God was going to do before our eyes. Amen. You can take that off, Brother Seth. We'll put on slide number three in just a minute. So you guys know the story. We started going through the adoption process. That took maybe six, seven months around there, start to finish. But we were all done. We had done the CPR. They had come to the house and looked at that. We were all this stuff had been done. And we're like, okay, we're about to get a call. And the social worker said, uh oh. And we're like, what? She said, we have to do a background check in Oklahoma because you guys lived in Oklahoma for a little bit. So we have to send off this paper to Oklahoma. They have to do a background check on you over there. And you know how slow Oklahoma is. And they've got to get that all the way back to California. And we were so discouraged. What? Come on already. Get with the program. People, we've done all this stuff. But then on a Friday afternoon, it was about three weeks that held us up, roughly about three weeks. And on a Friday afternoon, the worker called and she said, you're done. It's over. We're going to put you on the list where you can get a call at any day starting Monday morning. And we're like, okay, Monday morning around 1030, I got that very first call. And they said, would you take a two-week-old little baby boy? And we were so excited. We were like, absolutely. And we went down there, and Brother said, you can put on slide number three for me. There's two-week-old little Josiah, that black hair. And we got him on a Monday. This was the Sunday afterwards at his baby dedication. And you can just leave that slide on for a little bit, Brother Seth. But... I know this may sound crazy, but when we went to the Department of Human Services on that Monday and they put that baby all swallowed up in his little blue blanket and all you could see was that black hair, 
it was like, I, I, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but it was like I gave birth at the, the DHS office is the best way to describe it. That's how I feel because all those prayers that I prayed, all those tests, all those doctor appointments, all those nights staying up late going, God, why, when, why, when, they had just placed the answer to my prayers in my arms in little Josiah. Just so thankful for him. And then, Brother Seth, you can put up slide number four. Look at what God did. Yeah. <laughs> God did that, church. In that season, you can leave that on for a few minutes, Brother Seth. In that season of having to stand and see, it was hard. It wasn't easy. But we had to stand and see what God was going to do. Right. And you know what? It wasn't in my timing because I wanted it then. I wanted it right then when I started praying for it. Come on, God, come on. But God said, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I've got a plan. It wasn't even the way that I thought it was going to happen. I had a tunnel vision. Anybody ever had that before? You got tunnel vision. This is the way it's supposed to go. But God says, stand and see. God knows, church. Yeah. Me and Sister Shauna, we have a little thing we always say to each other in text. God knows. God knows. And he knew exactly what we needed. Yes. He knew that that three-week holdup, it was exactly what we needed. Because how many know if we would not have had that happen, if Oklahoma's situation wouldn't have needed to take place, we would not have gotten that call the exact time, the exact day that God had planned, right? God lined everything up the way that he wanted. We had to stand and see. That's right. We had to stand and see. Man, Amen. Not my timing. Not even my way. Not even my vision that I had imagined. His way. Amen. His way. Amen. Amen. And now there are times where I will be on the drums and I will look over at my Nathan playing that bass. And I'll look down at little princess with her hands lifted. And Caden will have his little finger pointed up to heaven. And Josiah stands real quiet and shy. And I'll say, oh, God, I had to stand and see. Amen. I had to stand and see, God, you had a plan. You had a plan. Yes, amen. Church, whatever you're going through, stand and see. Stand and see. Yeah. The children of Israel, we know the story. They were facing the sea. Ahead of them was the sea, and behind them was the Egyptians, right? And they were scared. Oh, we're about to die. We're trapped. There's nowhere to go. In front of us is the sea, and behind us is the Egyptians. Oh, what are we going to do? We're about to die. Yeah. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And we know the story. God parted the Red Sea. There was dry land, right? And they walked. And what was on their right? Water. What was on their left? Water. But he made a path for them to walk. Amen. And they walked. And when the Egyptians came behind them, what happened? The waters came together and they drowned, right? They had to stand and see. They felt trapped. They felt there's nowhere for us to go. What are we going to do? Stand and see. Stand and see. Exodus 14, 31, just a little bit further down. I like this. Exodus 14, 31. It says, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. They saw it. Amen. They saw what God can do. Church stand. Stand and see. Things. Oh, not literally. <laughs> Sorry. You stand and see this great thing which God's going to do. Stand and see. But Sister Miranda, you don't understand. You don't understand the situation I'm in. You don't know what that doctor just told me. I know a few weeks back, Brother Rick was getting a lot of tests done. And he was in a season of all he could do was stand and see. He didn't know what, what the test results were going to be. He had to stand and see. Stand and see, church. But Sister Miranda, you don't understand. My kids, they're crazy. They're wild. They're worse today than ever before. And I've been praying and praying, but I'm not seeing anything happen. Stand and see. Stand and see. But this isn't the way I thought that was going to happen. This isn't what I prayed for. This isn't the way this is supposed to happen. Stand and see. Yeah. Amen. Our God is able. 
Our God is able. He knows. He knows what you're going through. Stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before you. Amen. At this time, we can stand. In a minute, we're going to open up these altars. If you need prayer, if you are in a season right now where I don't know, I feel so trapped. I feel there's nowhere for me to go. I feel like in front of me there's things and behind me there's things and beside me there's things. I don't know what to do. Just stand and see. And if you're in a situation like that, you can come up here, you can pray at your seat, I'll pray with you, believe God with you. But we're going to take some time, church, to just pray and ask God to help us tonight. Amen. You can pray at your seat or come up to this altar, but let's take time to pray. Amen. Stand and see.
Get up and stand. Amen. Stand therefore. Oh, put on the whole armor of God, as the scripture tells us. Amen. You enjoy that word tonight? Yeah. Amen. 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 Great job tonight, honey. And I love you. And love all of you. Amen. Wonderful word. Wonderful spirit in this house. It's so good to see everybody here tonight. Amen. DJ, God bless you. Glad to see you again. Of course, everybody else, amen, and even Caden, Caden started thinking he was the Kleenex man, and just going around giving everybody <laughs> tissue, but he was doing what he was told to do. Oh, oh, he just had to be seen, though. <laughs> amen, but uh, happy Mother's Day, and uh, oh, let's, let's keep fighting the good fight of faith, amen? Amen. amen. Remember Wednesday night. Come expecting a wonderful time of the Lord and continue to keep one another in prayer. Amen. And got some people battling uh, cold, some people battling uh, COVID shock side effects, vaccine by, vaccine side effects, and uh, some people uh, going, traveling around. So let's just be praying for one another. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask if uh, Brother Rick would dismiss us in a word of prayer. Father. We thank you tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we've heard tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for the messenger. God, we ask you, Lord, that Jesus be with us, Lord, and God, get Sister Miranda strength, Lord, in her body, Lord, and make this fourth world go away, Father. God, be with us, Lord, as we go our separate ways, Lord. Keep your hand upon us, Lord, to bring us back again the next appointed time. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless y'all.